So this video is going to think about a bacterial signalling system which is known as quorum sensing. So quorum sensing is about uh, knowing uh, the population size. So fundamentally this mechanism is about asking uh, how many uh, cells of my species are present in an environment. So uh, that can be used for all sorts of different things. Um, so e.g. so it might be used by a pathogen. Uh, so it might be that a pathogen um, actually isn't pathogenic uh, until it reaches a certain population size. So the, the bacteria might invade, uh, it might be relatively benign until it reaches a certain cell density, so the bacterium has uh, grown and uh, reproduced within the host, and then when it reaches a certain population size, then it switches on its pathogenicity genes um, to then cause disease in the organism. So that's quite commonly used in pathogens. The classic example of where this was discovered uh, was um, in bioluminescence uh, in marine squid. Um, so there's a really cute little um, squid uh, called bobtail squid. I recommend that you um, uh, have a look for them. They're super cute. Um, and they have inside them bacteria, um, which used to be called uh, Vibrio at Fisheri. Uh, they've been, rel been relatively re recently renamed uh, to uh, Alivio Fisheri. It's the same stuff if you're Googling about. So they have some bacteria in them um, that are able to bioluminesce, um, i.e. to produce light. Uh, and this helps the squid in its environment uh, in terms of confusing uh, predators because it's got weird lights um uh, that are being made, so it's the, the squid is making light, while well, the bacteria inside the squid are making light. So that then confuses any predators in the environment because it can't quite work out what it's looking at and that gives the squid a competitive advantage. Okay. So this is all about knowing how many cells you've got um, in your local environment. So we can have a graph like this. Uh, so if this is time, I'm going to put a couple of things on this graph. So first of all, we'll start with cell number. So obviously, in a bacterial population, you start with relatively few cells, and then you start to go into exponential growth. So you have an increase in the number of cells over time. Okay? But a bacteria can't just go and count how many cells it can see outside. Uh, it needs to have a proxy for cell number. Uh, and that proxy is a signal... Uh, which is referred to as an AHL, uh, which equals N acyl homoserine lactone, which you don't need to really worry about, uh, but just to show you the structure of the signal. So uh, you have a five membered ring with an oxygen uh, on there, uh, you've got an NH, you've got a carbonyl. And then you've got an R, so that can be variable. So there are different types of these molecules. It depends what's on the R group as to exactly which version it is, but they've all got this common structure. Okay, so AHL uh, is the signal. And what happens uh, with our AHL concentration is, again, we start off very low. Then as the cell density starts to go up, uh, we start to increase the concentration, but then it goes up very rapidly when we reach a certain population size, and we'll think about that mechanistically in a second. Um, and then if this is, so if this is the concentration of, of AHL, there is a threshold concentration, so it has to reach a particular concentration, so that's the threshold, and above the concentration, above that threshold, you get bioluminescence. So below uh, the threshold, uh, we've got no light. So the bacteria just look kind of normal. But if we go above the threshold concentration, then we start to switch on bioluminescence. So that's um, so we end up with this sort of population density behavior. 
So let's think about how that works at a cellular level. So we'll think about two different situations. One is a bacterial cell that ha is in a low population density. And the other will obviously be in a high population density. So here's my bacterial cell. Okay. Um, so my bacterial cell is making low levels of this hormone. So there's a protein inside the cell uh, which is called Lux I. Uh, and that synthesizes the AHL. Okay, so Lux I is uh, responsible for AHL synthesis. Okay. So it's making this homocemin lactone molecule, and this molecule is able to actually diffuse across the plasma membrane. I should have said um, that this is for gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positives have a slightly different signaling mechanism, they don't use these AHLs. So in our gram-negative bacteria, at low population density we've got Lux I, which is the enzyme responsible for making AHLs, those can then diffuse out of the cell. So we've got a relatively low concentration of AHL outside the cell. Okay, so the bacteria is making this AHL, it's gently diffusing out of the cell, and not much is happening. Mm -hmm. But now let's think about what happens if a cell is in a high population density. So obviously, to start with, the amount of um, um, the amount of signal is going to be proportional to the number of cells in the system. So now we're in an environment where we've got reasonably high AHL concentration. So we started with AHL low, and now a, a, the concentration of AHL is high. Mm -hmm. When the concentration of AHL is high enough, it can start to go inside other cells. So this has been made by other cells in the area, and it starts to come in to our cell, where it's detected by a receptor, which is called Lux R. So at high enough concentrations, the AHL will start to diffuse back into the cell and bind to the receptor. Um, and that receptor is able to activate the expression of genes. Okay, so it's a transcription regulator. So Luxar, with its AHL bound, come and sits on the promoter of, uh, in fact, not just one gene, but a whole operon's worth of genes called the Lux operon. So bacteria are a bit weird of, um, in eukaryotes, you sort of have one promoter, so that's the promoter. In eukaryotes, you have one promoter for one gene. Okay, so every gene has its own promoter. Bacteria are a bit weird, you can have one promoter to multiple genes. There's a quirk of how translation works in bacteria that means that you can actually express multiple genes from a single promoter. So within this locus operon, uh, there are multiple genes that encode various different things. So one of the genes encoded is Lux I. Okay, so Lux I is the enzyme that's responsible for making AHLs. So we're going to make some more AHLs and they're going to go outside the cell. So we're actually going to increase the concentration even further. Okay, so we've now got a very high concentration. So because Lux I is effectively activated by its own activity, so we've got Lux I made the AHLs and then we're making more Lux I in response to AHLs and then we're going to make more of it, there's what we call a positive feedback loop here. Okay, so it's activating itself. 
Okay? And that's why we get that very abrupt um, increase in AHL concentration is because Luxi is being activated by itself effectively. So you start to get to a positive feedback loop. You make AHLs, uh, they diffuse out. That stimulates the production of more of gene expression. So you get more Luxi, so you get more AHLs. We get a positive feedback loop going. Okay. In the Lux operon is also the enzyme luciferase. So Lux equals luciferase which is the protein that generates this blue light. Um, so luciferase, it needs a substrate, it needs a substrate called luciferin, it needs oxygen and it needs some ATP in order to make light. That's obviously not a complete chemical reaction, but those things are needed for it. Okay. So the other gene that gets switched on at this particular threshold concentration, we need to re reach a particular concentration for Lux R to get activated. Once that does, it activates more Lux I, but it also switches on luciferase. So this is way why we end up with bioluminescence only happens above the threshold. So if we think about the uh, luciferase activity on this graph, it will be low, 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 and then at that threshold concentration basically it acts in a very binary way. So that is the bioluminescence, uh, which is the same thing as luciferase activity. Okay, so at low concentrations, we have uh, relatively low cell numbers, we have relatively low concentration of AHL, we definitely have no bioluminescence. We then, as the cell concentration starts to increase, we start to increase in the homoserine lactone, but that ends up becoming non-linear. We then end up with this very rapid increase due to positive feedback loop. And then when we hit that threshold concentration of AHL, then uh, that's enough to switch on the luciferase activity. So it effectively becomes an on-off switch because we've got a concentration-dependent mechanism in there. So the synthesis is by Lux I, the perception is by Lux R, Lux R switches on genes uh, in a response to a particular concentration of AHLs, that makes more Lux I, so we get a positive feedback loop, and it also switches on luciferase to make the light uh, to support uh, the bacteria in the bobtail squid. So uh, we've got an example, a relatively sim uh, simple signaling cascade, but this is really important for a lot of bacteria, so as I say, Bioluminescence is the classic example, but a lot of pathogens also use this system. You can imagine if instead of bioluminescence, which is our blue line here, we have a pathogenicity factor, uh, so something that's toxic to the host, that suddenly switches on and is to a very high concentration, so that would overwhelm the host um, and mean that the pathogen won. So it's a very useful uh, signalling system, uh, and this time in a bacterium.